This song is dedicated to a certain kind of people, which just so happens to be my other favorite kind of people. You know, the ones that like to, you know, hurt themselves, bro. Skateboard, Ollie, bro. Kick lips, split your lip, bro. Okay, so I will be releasing three more episodes of this tonight, and the series is done. Now I can go back to roasting YouTubers like Morgs, Mario, and others. And of course, I'll go back to gaming. Streaming. First, let's get this done. Quick audio check. I don't know what. What's. Why is it. What the hell is it doing? It's not even plugged in properly. Damn. Well, yeah, let's keep, let's go into it. First of all, can we just not work? Like, can we just not be pizza delivery people? This happened four years ago when I was still in high school. I was told to do my last delivery of my shift. I got in my car, which was a 1999 Camry, perfect for delivering pizzas. I GPS the address on my phone. I live upstate in the country, so all pizza deliveries were long drives. I remember the sun was starting to set, so it was probably around 7 o'clock. I'd say after a good 15 minutes of driving through the foresty dirt roads, my GPS said I had arrived. It was an old little cottage-like house made almost entirely of wood. It was sitting all by itself in the middle of absolutely nothing but forest. The lawn was completely unkept, as the grass was almost at knee height. I was used to this kind of thing, so I didn't think much of it. I took the pizza to the front door. There was no doorbell, so I knocked loudly on the door. Within ten seconds, I heard the sound of footsteps hitting wood on the inside of the house. The footsteps made it to the door and stopped. I started to feel uneasy. I got the feeling that I was being watched. And that's when I noticed there was a peephole in the door. It's the pizza guy, I called out. I heard a low, harsh sounding voice on the other side of the door, telling me to bring the pizza out back. I didn't like the idea of going back there, something didn't seem right. Are you sure, sir? I called out. He didn't answer my question. The sound of footsteps didn't move away from the door, so I had the feeling he was still watching me. I almost found myself walking back to my car, but I decided I didn't want any trouble with my boss. The last time I brought a pizza back, he gave me attitude, so I reluctantly walked through the uncut grass and around the small house to the back. I remember there was a shed. Why is it going dark all of a sudden? Why come the patio, There was a table with four chairs surrounding it. In one of the chairs facing away from me, I saw the head of somebody sitting in the seat. I began walking over and said, "Excuse me," but the person didn't even move an inch. "Excuse me," I said again louder. Then from behind me, I heard, Psst, over here. I turned around to see a man poking his head out from the corner of the house, looking what at the me with a pleased smile. It looks like that one guy from uh, Fat Pizza, uh, you know, got the chainsaw. Come over here, I want to show you something. I'm I good. I freaked out, turned around, and ran around the house in the opposite direction. Back it's, um, what's the name from my car, For some reason, still holding the pizza. I got in my car, started it, and got away from there. On my way back to the pizzeria, I pulled over to the side of the road and called the police. Eventually, I was informed that there was no sign of anybody having been in that house for a long time. I quit my delivery job a few days after that. I have no idea what would have happened to me had I gone up to that man. But to this day, I still wish I'd just turned my head to see who or what was sitting in that patio chair. Okay, let's move on to the next one. True, I, I kind of think it's too sad. True nightmare stories, midnight office. Working the night shift always sucked. I work in an yeah. office building and would constantly do the night shifts since it was the only time it would work out for me. I was just about always the only person on the floor I worked on. 
possibly in the whole building. There would always be a kind of eerie feeling to being in such a big building with most of the lights out and absolutely no one around. But on the upside, it was peaceful and less stressful, and I was able to get a lot of work done. There was this one night, though. It was a Friday night, around 2 in the morning. I was typing away on my keyboard when I heard a noise from outside my cubicle. It sounded like just a nah. random crack from the walls or something. It's unusual in this building, but I didn't get too concerned about it. I resumed typing away and was once again interrupted by a sound. This time, the sound of a computer starting up. It caught me off guard. I, I was sure nobody else was working the night shift. I stood up on my chair to get a view over the cubicle walls. The glare of a computer screen in the dark was visible in a cubicle on the opposite side of the room. Okay, now someone just break in just to you know, play a couple quick games of Fortnite. Is that a problem? Technically, that's illegal, but still. Then I did something stupid, something I regret. I asked if there was anybody there in a yell, hoping to get an answer from a fellow employee. But instead, I saw the glaring light of the computer monitor across the room turn off, and there was once again nothing but darkness on that side of the room. I started getting nervous. I turned off the lamp and computer screen so that I wouldn't give away my position to whoever that was. I crouched down and tiptoed out across to a nearby cubicle. There was just utter silence. I sat waiting for something to happen for God knows how long, but I eventually decided the coast was clear. I tiptoed down past all the cubicles until I reached the opening near the exit door to the stairs and elevators, and that's when I realized that my fearful suspicion was true. There was a man crouched down behind the plant in the corner of the room, dressed in all black. I felt my heart sink as I Punching. noticed him, but it didn't Shooting. seem like he knew that I noticed him. I turned back to the stairway door. There was no way I was going to wait for the elevator and take a chance. I casually opened the door and closed it behind me, proceeding to walk down the stairs. After making it down about two flights of stairs, I heard the door above me push open aggressively, followed by manic, echoing footsteps coming fast down the stairs. I raced down the stairs, running as fast as I could, all while the footsteps above me were getting louder. I finally made it to the first floor, raced through the lobby, and out the front door. Whoever was in there didn't follow me. I immediately called the cops, along with one of my bosses. My boss said no one was scheduled to work except for me. The cops scanned the place from top to bottom. There was no one in there. I couldn't help him out with any description other than he was wearing all black. I did continue to do the night shift for about a week after that, with my boss allowing me to lock all possible entrances to the floor, including the elevators. But I still wasn't comfortable with it. So ever since, I've been doing the day shifts. Hmm. Hold up. Is that Rick? Like, uh, Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty? Look up in this cubicle. Not one of the... Up here. Hmm. Okay, the final story is... The story is from the point of view of a 16-year-old girl. I used to have a boy living next door to me that I was obsessed with. Him. His name was Joey. Every time I would go outside, Joey would come outside as well, as if he were watching me through his windows, waiting for me. He was 17 and very weird. He didn't seem to have any friends, as he was always home. I tried to give every sign possible that I didn't like this guy, but he wouldn't get the message. So I had to finally just tell him one day that I don't like him and to leave me alone. The look on his face that day is something that won't leave me. It was the kind of angry look a toddler gives their parents when they can't have a toy. Coming from a 17 year old, that's much more disturbing. One night, my parents left me to watch the house. I was working on a school project when I felt my bed shift a little bit. I looked under my bed. I screamed as I saw Joey laying under my bed. I ran away while he tried Joey, to pull out Joey, you're a weirdo. If I had a sword out, I would grab him, choke him, kick him so hard, right in the nuts, so I the and just punch him in the face non-stop. The police found him still in my room and arrested him. Apparently, he admitted this wasn't the first time he had hid under my bed. 
They also found pictures of me scattered across his room. The most disturbing one was of me sleeping, and it was taken from inside my room. Okay, that'll be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you all next year. Bye-bye. This song is dedicated to a certain kind of people, which just so happens to be my favorite kind of people. You know, the ones that, you know, you're standing next to them, and it's all of a sudden it gets dark. I mean, I mean, you know, your, your best friend is, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Black people, I'ma steal your shoes. You better hide your wallet, cause I'ma take that too. Black people.